It's been called the most lethal tank in NATO. Unveiled at the factory in Telford where it'll be made, this is Challenger 3, the British Army's new main battle tank. The Defence Secretary today announced an £800 million contract to produce 148 of these digital tanks, which it's claimed will transform the UK's armoured capability. Well, what you will see is a far more uh, integrated uh, vehicle. So it won't just be a vehicle on its own. It'll be a vehicle that will be able to queue targets, talk to other parts of the battlefield in a way that, uh, in my day, would have all gone back to a brigade through a battalion headquarters where in the brigade or even the division, uh, all of that sort of targeting would have been worked through sometimes quite slowly. This, just like many other nodes on the battlefield, the attack helicopter, even the infantry will be able to have a, a much fuller picture and in doing so force multiply the effect they can bring to it. So first of all it will be able to do that. Uh, secondly it will be more lethal, that gun is more lethal than the current gun, it's going to be a smooth bore, it's going to use a, a NATO standard uh, of ammunition which makes it definitely more flexible and versatile wherever we go. What tank the British Army was going to get had been the subject of much speculation. There were rumours the MOD was considering the German Leopard as a potential replacement. In the end, though, they decided to buy British. Today is a real landmark event uh, for the British Army. Challenger 3 will be produced by Rheinmetall BAE Systems here in Shropshire, the contract securing 650 UK jobs. The tank uses an upgraded Challenger 2 body fitted with a new high-tech turret. So what's different about the Challenger 3? Well, its high-velocity ammunition can be programmed thanks to its digital turret, equipped with a 120mm smoothbore gun. Upgraded suspension will improve firing accuracy on the move, and there's an automatic detection and tracking system to identify targets. There are thermal long-range cameras for day and night imagery, and its upgraded engine with a new cooling system can take the Challenger 3 up to 60 miles an hour and it's future-proofed with digital capability to integrate information from all domains. Initial operating capability is expected by 2027, with full operating capability by 2030. So it, it, is, it is absolutely a generational leap from, it, from Challenger 2 or indeed, of course, Challenger 1 or, or the Chieftain before. Why? First of all, because there's, there's an open architecture on the platform which allows us to integrate not only with other tanks but also uh, across the battle space. So it will be able to move data between uh, aviation platforms, the attack helicopter, uh, 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 the F-35 and indeed other platforms in the land environment like Boxer etc. So the commanders will be able to uh, identify the enemy or whatever it happens to be and move that information seamlessly to other platforms to make sure that we can uh, target that uh, enemy as, as best as possible. Getting Challenger 3 to this point has taken years of research and development. Current Army tank crews have tried it out and it's been designed with them in mind. We've got automatic target tracking and automatic target detection so in the same way that you know in a modern smartphone you can do face recognition and auto focusing it's exactly the same sort of concept as that so you know we're bringing that sort of development into the modern tank um, and it, yeah it's a complete complete game changer from the uh, from the current generation the message from the recent integrated review is that the size of the British Army is no longer an indication of its lethality, as we saw in the reduction in troop numbers. But it's only 40 years ago that the Army had 900 tanks. So the question many people will ask is, 148 of these, however good they are, really a credible force? Not, like, not that long ago, most of the Allies had thousands of tanks. So tell me um, why 148 would be two regiments worth is going to be a credible force. Well, because I think it's going to be credible to deliver, you know, a armour brigade uh, when you need it at the time you need it. You know, the, the, the key we've learned from Iraq, for example, is you can roll up a, a, an enemy armour brigade in, in fairly short time, as, as we saw the Allies did against the Iraq at Saddam Hussein. But once you've done that and consolidated, you need a different type of force to build the peace or build the nation. Uh, and that's why I don't think you need so much mass uh, uh, over a long period of time. Not long ago, there was talk of the UK following the Dutch example and potentially mothballing its tanks. Today's contract announcement, very much a statement. The British Army will remain an armoured force, smaller maybe, but with an even greater punch. Simon Newton, Forces News, Telford. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.